Hello everyone and welcome back to our blind let's play episode 17 the out of infinity. My name is Flightless Bird, this is your Sorbius Gaming channel and today my friends we're beginning route number 3. Yes, route number 3. Which... There we go. I was about to say I can't skip for some reason. Did something get added after completing the game twice? That was kind of weird. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today as we uh... As we resume this wonderful game, hoping to get some more answers. So how is our uh, pl third playthrough going to start? We're going to start mm. by listening to the joke. It's going to be a lot of skipping this part probably as we make our way towards uh, some of the choices that we haven't seen yet. Uh, this time we're going to answer, it was the Tanuki. Now, I'm pretty sure this is only blued out because the first time we played this game, I accidentally selected the wrong thing. But, in our previous place... Oh no. Apparently in route number two, we said it was the Tanuki. Okay, so in both route two and route three, we said it was the Tanuki. So, we're going to go ahead and select this. We've already seen this, so we can just zip right through it. And uh, we're going to stay silent. We still haven't chosen just who exactly are you. Is that going to be Route 4? No. It's not Route 4. Huh. Okay. Do we ever choose that option? Just who exactly are you? Because... I don't see... C, uh, based on my notes that we do that huh okay well um apparently we are uh staying silent i wonder what i wonder why just so exactly are you is not a credible option but stay silent and away we go there we see the strange girl and this time oh we got a new option who am i and this is coming off of what? Um, a blade of light slices the flat world darkness and he knew the direction was over there and that there might be a way out if he could get over there. Who am I? I didn't know where I was, but I quietly opened my eyes. And so is this kid? Are we kid now? The next thing I knew, I was on a bed. The ceiling was so white that it was slightly blinding. It is. We are kid, my friends. You can see in the top left, it says Kid Awakening. It smelled of disinfectant. I wonder where I was. Are you awake now? Hi, you. A shadow passed above me on the bed. I wonder who it could be. No, wait a minute. Somewhere. I felt like I had met that person somewhere before. How are you doing? You look all right enough. Who, who was it? I knew her. I was sure that I knew her. Still, I couldn't put my finger on any one thing about her that I knew. The more I thought about, the more the area around my temples padded with pain. Oh, I guess it's no good then. Yep, yep, yep. Called it. This was you. Uh, one of the good things about having voices is being able to hear voices uh, and matching them up with the characters. Does your head hurt? I pressed my temples with my fingers on both my hands, nodding slightly. I see, just wait a second, alright? Oh, look at the little eyeballs poke up. I mean, not eyeballs, uh, what, irises? Um, ah, eye sockets? What do you call that when your eye, like, goes from smaller to bigger? Uh, anyway. I'll try to find some painkillers. She laughed sweetly and stepped away from me. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of skipping happening, though, because for Kid, there's a lot of things that we didn't see with Kid. So a lot of this is probably going to be new? Unsure. I raised myself up and looked around. The room was completely white, with a number of beds tightly lined up in a row. Looking behind me, there was a curved glass window in the wall. I got off the bed and put on my shoes, which was neatly arranged below me. I approached the window. Outside, as far as I could see, one could see an endless sheet of blue, along with a bunch of beautiful little fishies. Man, look at that picture. It looks so gorgeous with the sun shining down like that. 
Transparent waves of light swayed gently in the dense, deep navy mist. I put both my hands on the wall and pushed my face up against the glass. Just then, a flash of silver light darted across my vision. For an instant, I was afraid. Then I noticed it was just a fish. Well, this is the middle of the ocean. Uh, what's the matter? At some point, the girl had come to stand beside me. Of course it is. This is the Lemieux Infirmary. Lemieux. The instant I heard that word, a flash of searing light reappeared in the back of my mind. That was right. That was right. I had come to Lemieux. The theme park Lemieux floating in the ocean. And I had been walking around Lemieux with her. There were ancient ruins, the whale floating in the darkness, the jellyfish gondola, and merry-go-round. But it's so weird seeing those pictures with people around. Because, you know, the entire time we've been playing this game, it's just been a few of us stuck in this area. So everything seems so empty. But, but why had I come to that place, to Lemieux? Had I come for fun? Of course I had. It was a theme park, after all. But was that right? Was that really the reason? Violent head pain struck me again. I shook my head again and again, my face distorted from the pain. Hey, uh, are you alright? Shouldn't you rest a little more? She helped support me as I returned to the bed. I bought some headache medicine. She held two white pills in her left hand. And her right was a cup filled with water. White, white pills. Two of them. Uh, thanks or no thanks? Uh, we are going to be gracious and say thanks. Thank you. Uh, thanks. I took the pills and gulped them down. It's probably just mild barotrauma or decompression sickness. It happens a lot to visitors. They just feel ill all of a sudden and get caught in here. She said that as she slightly took the cup from my hand. I stick my head back into the fluffy pillow. It's a bit rough coming down from here anyway. People with no experience just coming to six atmospheres for long periods of time. Sheesh. The air pressure in the Earth's atmosphere is made for people to live comfortably. Of course, people are going to have bad reactions to breathing air they're sick. Air and first love. Both should be light. No doubt about that. Coffee and your first time. Ah, those, of course, are better thick. Uh huh. She touched my face with the palm of her hand. The backs of her slender fingers stroked my cheek. The smooth texture of her skin slipped down from my neck to above my chest, stopping there. It's all right. You don't seem to have a fever. She smiled at me. Somehow I felt all embarrassed. I pulled the bed cover up to my eyes and hid my face. Just rest like that for a while, okay? I'll go see what's going on outside. Uh, outside? Yes, um, how should I put this? While you were asleep, it seems that there was a bit of trouble. Huh? Well, I'll explain it later. Anyway, just rest and don't worry about anything for now, okay? See me nod, she walked away from the bed. Uh, hey, 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 wait a second. Huh? What? Just let me ask you one thing. What might that be? Why am I here? You just told me that this is the Lemieux Infirmary, right? You pass out all of a sudden at the kiosk on Zutasak. And then some guy and I, we called you here. You don't remember what happened? Kiosk at the kiosk. 
in front of a big window. A sweet, a sweet smell. Something covering my body. The Lemire mascot. You, you hit me. That's right, I remember. And I was struck dizzy. Like something being stolen away, I lost consciousness and... So, do you remember? Uh, yes. Do you have any other questions? I shook my head and answered. Well, be a good boy and wait here, alright? I'll be right back. She patted my head gently and began walking for the door. While I turned my head to stare at her back. My last name is Tanaka. And my first name is Yu. My real name is much longer, though. What's such a pain? Just call me you. <laughs> I remembered her words. You turned at the door and looked back at me, lifting her hand to wave and left the infirmary. All alone inside the quiet room, it was like time had stopped. I didn't know if there was medicine that started to work or not, but my headache was completely gone. As I stared at the ceiling, I thought. I thought about the events leading to my being in that bed. All the dots. Before I passed out, I had been walking around the mew with you. We had gone to a shop and were talking. Then we rode an egg-shaped elevator up two floors. Before I had met you, I had been in a small park. I was on the bench in that park. I was waiting for someone. Who? Who was I waiting for? I didn't know. My memory was a fog, and thinking about events after that would make my mind seemingly cloud over. I shook my head several times, trying to clear it and concentrate. Why was I there? Why had I come to Lemieux? Did I come alone? Or was I with someone else? What was I doing before I came to Lemieux? Had I arrived at the amusement park? All the dots. It's no use. I can't remember. The thread of my memory was cut off right there. I couldn't recall anything beyond that time on the park bench enjoying ice cream. It was like getting lost in a forest and going to turn back only to discover that everything had gone dark. It felt very strange. I felt like I was just in the middle of a dream. I felt like I had lost something, something very important. But I didn't know what that something was. And not being able to move forward made me feel that I was specifically because I had lost something important. I felt an unpleasant sense of something lacking. And that sense of something not being quite right irritated me. I took my right hand out of, from under the blanket and stared dreamily at my palm. The countless wrinkles etched there, intertwining, reaching out like the branches of a tree in complicated patterns. The pinkish skin and buried deeper the slightly blue veins and five fingers. How my hand had always had this strange shape? Bizarre thoughts hit me from nowhere. No, my right palm was no different than it had ever been. Yet, for some reason, I felt that I had to doubt even that natural fact. Maybe, just maybe, until a few hours ago, I might have had six fingers. Or seven. Or maybe even eight. I felt like something was wrong. Could I have been feeling that way because I had lost something special? I opened and closed my hand a few times, just repeating that meaningless, simple exercise. I wandered in the forest, searching for that one lost finger. The door to the infirmary opened and you returned. You dashed into the room and ran toward me as if she was going to bowl me over. What are you doing? This is no time to be sleeping! She shouted at me suddenly. Huh? Completely clueless, I simply laid there in a daze. Get up! Hurry! You peeled away the blanket and dragged me off of the bed. Uh, what? What's the matter? I don't know. I, I don't know, but anyway, we gotta escape from here. You had a panicked expression. The relaxed look that had been on her face just a while ago had co vanished completely. Uh, escape? To where? There's only one place. The floating island on the ocean. Uh, why? Because I say so. Don't ask any questions. We're escaping because we have to escape. There was something urgent and powerful in Yu's words. She dragged me along. 
I felt a sharp sense of crisis from her powerful grip. I hurriedly slipped on my sneakers and fled out of the room with her. The instant we emerged into the sprawling corridor, my feet stopped. I sucked in my breath and my body froze and I just stared at the light spreading before me. There was something missing. People, sound, warmth. No way. This can't be. The words I muttered were devoured by the eerie silence. Looking back and forth in the corridor, even the furthest direction, there was no sign of anyone. Just the man-made walls on both sides. A natural light, whiter than white, shone from the ceiling and gave off a cold light. Uh, why? Why? Isn't anyone here? You get it now? That's why we had to escape? Uh, everyone. Where could everyone be? Do you think they're playing hide and seek? Oh, the dots. Anyway, there's no time to think about now. We need to get out of here as soon as possible or... Saying that, you again tugged my arm. Hunched over it and on the verge of tripping, I let you lead me through the white, wide corridors as we ran. Our footsteps were the only sound echoing in the quiet complex. The more we ran, the more out of breath I became, my heart was pounding. Everything felt... Everything just felt like a dream. A nightmare in which some unknown monster was chasing us everywhere. With no clue as to the identity of the monster nor why we needed to escape. Hair raising fear rose within me and I was powerless to do anything. I simply cowered. In a world devoid of people, among faded colors, just used palm grasped my arm. Only the uncertainty of her touch, that one point of contact, allowed me to retain any connection with reality. Finally, we arrived in front of the elevator. You rushed to the front of the door and pushed the up button. All the dots. All the double dots. The button was unlit. No way, you've got to be kidding. Why is this thing stopped? You struck the button repeatedly, but nothing happened. The light stayed off. There was no sign that the floor display above the elevator doors was functioning either. Hey, uh, aren't there any emergency stairs or anything? You looked back and shifted her eyes around as if she was thinking. That was really adorable the way they just had her change her look really rapidly, you know, through all the processes. Follow me. Saying only that, she dashed off. Straight down that long stretching corridor. You turned her head to the left and right looking for something. It looked like she soon found out what she was looking for. And she headed toward it single-mindedly. A ladder. And next to it, the words Oskang Emergency Exit were written in straight red letters with an arrow pointing upward. At the other end of the ladder was the ceiling and a sturdy looking door with a round shaped handle attached to it. Uh, are there uh, emergency stairs on the other side? Without answering, you started climbing the ladder. She turned the handle and opened the door. Now, hurry! This is an emergency escape corridor. There are emergency stairs that run along it. You told me that quickly while we ran. The corridor stretched in a gentle arc so that the far end was not visible. The scenery was repetitive and I began to have disillusions that I was running in place. Where in the world am I right now? How far do I have to run? I just had to trust in you and chase after her back. Suddenly, you turned right. Inertia kept me going forward, afraid I would miss a turn. I grabbed the corner with my hand, yanking myself around and chasing after you again. The route had become straight. Immediately to the left, a green colored sign for emergency stairs was lit up. Below the light was a closed door. You jumped toward the door's handle. <laughs> this is stiff. This is so... You was desperately trying to turn the handle. Uh, it won't open? It'll open! It'll open for sure! I'll make it open! 
Well, don't just stand there. Get over here and help me. Spurred by her words, I firmly grabbed onto the handle. I tried with all my might to turn it in the direction of the arrow that said, Of nine, open. Dang it. What's with this? It won't budge at all. It was stuck fast, almost as if it had been welded shut. Didn't look like it would move to the right or left. We'll try to turn it when I say, ready, go. Okay. Ready, go. With that, I threw my complete weight onto the handle. Ugh, dang it. Open. Just then. Sound arose as if from inside the earth, echoing heavily from somewhere. You and I relaxed our grips and looked at each other. What? What was that sound? The walls shook. A small vibration shook the handle we had grabbed. The lights on the ceiling flashed irregularly. The metal mesh floor was clanging against itself. An earthquake? It couldn't be. Were. Were. In the middle of the ocean, after all? The vibration gradually increased in intensity. The squeaking sound of steel against steel shocked our ears. You and I held our breath, waiting still. We tried to focus, sharpening our senses, our eyes wandering the void. A low, growling sound, like the groan of a monster. A monster approaching. A voice filled with hate and rage turned to a howling roar, sending shivers up my spine. Uh, where's that coming from? <laughs> huh? Where? Where is it coming from? <laughs> what? Yu's voice approached a scream. Her face lost all color, and her lips went dry. The eyes behind her silky, swaying bangs looked as if they were about to cry. Silky, swaying bangs? Wind. It's wind. Muttering that, I looked in the direction of the wind, down the extremely long corridor. Something appeared to be pushing and vying for space. So, no way. So so. You're kidding. Masaka. It couldn't be. Water? A monster came crashing toward us at a terrifying speed, mixed in a roiling spray of water. You guys may want to get out of there. There was no doubt. It was a rushing behemoth of water. A massive fourth of waves. Ah! It was not the time to be shouting. You and I started sprinting desperately. We turned left at the corner and ran, and ran and ran. The voice of the monster was right on our heels, but we couldn't look back. If we looked back, we felt like we would be swallowed up. Something beyond fear or terror had made our minds go completely blank. We couldn't even think. We could only run desperately for our lives. My shoulder bumped against the wall of the narrow corridor. It looked like my foot would get caught up in the bent metal flooring. Avoiding the pipes that hung down, we leaped over the raised entrance of the watertight door and ran. We just ran on and on. This has got to be a dream. For an instant, that thought cut across my mind. In a world devoid of people, among faded colors, a drooling monster was reaching its bluish white arms out toward my neck. We were spit out with the mass of water into a sprawling room. We were turned head over heel in the violent water. Several times, maybe several dozen times, over and over again. Until, finally, my body stopped moving. Ouch! Ouch! I peeled my body from the soaked floor. Water was still pouring in from the far side of the open emergency entrance. It was flowing down like a waterfall and spreading smoothly to the far corridor as if it was crawling across the floor. That's right. What about you? Just as I thought that and looked back, you were standing up. Uh, are you okay? I shook the soaked you shoulders and looked into her eyes. 
They were empty. Her purplish blue lips were quivering. Yu was completely dazed. You, you, hang on! All the dots! The level of water had continued to rise during that short time. Ah, what should I do? What should I? Just then, the watertight doors at the four sides of the room began to close at once. The doors are closing. Ever so slowly, letting off a dull sound. You! You! I tried shouting and shaking her harder, but there was no response. Instead, Yu's body went limp and she collapsed to the floor. Hey, quit goofing around! Come on! I took Yu's arm and put it over my shoulder, lifting her up. I started walking toward the nearest watertight door. Yu was heavy like a stone. Water pulled around both my legs so I couldn't move forward as fast as I wanted. A steel partition gradually slid down from above. Another one came up from below, pushing away water as it moved. The obstructed water swirled around. As the width between the doors narrowed, the water level increased. Come on, make it in time! Please, just make it in time! Sadly, the door didn't stop moving. There was only a small opening left for us to escape. Whoa! There's no way I'm going to die here. Giving a shout, I ran, pushing the water out of the way. Yu's slumpy body weighed heavily on my shoulder, but I couldn't let her go of her arm. I pulled together with all my power. Almost there. Almost right there. Thwomp. With one hand, I grabbed hold of the edge of the bulkhead. Just barely. Just a few seconds after I had squeezed our bodies through that narrow gap, the watertight door closed completely. We placed our backs against the closed door and collapsed. There was almost no sense of relief. Both of my legs were shaking and my heart was beating like it would explode. We spent a few moments there in a stupor. Whew, man. Already getting off to an intense start. Woo! The next thing I knew, the seawater had mostly disappeared from the floor. Now, it wasn't to say it was completely dry, it was still wet. And my body, and Yu's body. We were still soaked. Uh, are you alright? Huh? What? You were really out of it until just a second ago. Who was? Uh, you were. Me? I was? You stood up and took a wet hair in hands. Wiping away the water droplets around her eyes with the palm of her hand. <gasps> oh, that's right. <laughs> the water carried us away. <laughs> carried and carried and carried us away. <laughs> and, and what happened? Uh, we got swept into the next corridor over. And then all of a sudden, the watertight doors started to close. But you, you all spacey. And to make things worse, you fainted. So, how do we get out? Well, I got us out. You? Well, yeah. Really? Uh, what? You don't believe me? But... You, well, you seem more like the type we need help rather than dishes help out. Well, thanks. I just saved your life, you know? What? I mean, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh, it's a joke. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you really did save us, I suppose I should thank you. Yes, yes, that would be nice. You know? <laughs> thank you. Ah, shucks. No worries. Anyone would have done the same. You bowed her head slightly. Do you really mean it? Well, of course. I guess. <laughs> you can't say of course followed by I guess. Uh, you guess? I said I was joking. You take everything so seriously? You're just an instant youngin. All the dots. All the double dots. Ah, whatever. 
Well, I suppose I owed you one anyway. Owed me? Well, when I collapsed the shop, you helped me, right? So now we're even. When I said that, Yu's face lit up in a smile. Anyway, enough of that. Let's hurry up and find an exit. Yeah. You never know when there may be more flooding. Yu was checking the ceiling and walls as she started walking. I followed along behind her. We cut across the wide room, heading for the exit. There was a big, empty, mechanical merry-go-round. Without music or the voices of children playing. Only its bright lights glowed in a lonely sort of way. Hey! That reminds me, I haven't even asked your name yet. Uh-huh. Name, your name. Oh, yeah, well, that, um, um, I'm, uh, my, uh, name is, uh, name is, uh, all the dots. Mm -hmm. And? I, I didn't know. I didn't know. My name. My name. There was no way it, it 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 couldn't be. I should know it. I mean, it's my name, my very own name. Name, 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 name. Then, all of a sudden, a shock shot through my whole body. Oh, Arg! What's the matter? My head hurt. It seemed like it would split right open. I held my head in both arms and coupled forward. Are you alright? Grinding my teeth, I desperately tried to endure the pain. Darkness blanketed my eyes. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't hear anything. The darkness invaded my brain and glommed together. It was a glob that would devour my brain. And dissolve it into... mush. Hey, hey hang in there! Hey! I didn't know. I didn't know my name. Who could I possibly be? The next thing I knew, I was on a bed. The ceiling was so white that it was slightly blinding. It smelled of uh, disinfectant. Are you awake now? A shadow passed above me on the bed. You. You looked at me as if she was worried. Well, this is... Back to the beginning, thanks to you. The beginning? The infirmary, huh? Hey, next time you decide to go and kill over, can you do it somewhere a little close to this room? <laughs> Because it was really a pain hauling you piggyback all the way here. Uh, sorry. Oh, it's alright. You don't have to apologize. By the way, did you remember your name? Name. That's right. My name. Oh, hold on a sec. You don't have to try to force yourself to remember. All the dots. I don't want you getting like you did before, alright? You said it very carefully. I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. So just calm down. I want you to relax and answer them. Alright? Sure. First, do you know today's date? Today is, what is it, May 2nd? May 3rd? May 1st? What's the first day? Because I think the last day is May 7th, right? Hmm. Today is the 1st. May 1st, right? Hey, I remember that! It is the 1st. You remember the date 
So, how about your age? Age. Your birthday will do. Either way. I try to pull together the threads of my memory. My age. My birthday. When I started to think about it, my temples began to throb. Hey, no straining yourself. If you can't remember, then you can't remember. Just say so. But that didn't mean I could just stop thinking about it. I endured the headache as I felt like I wanted lost through a forest. There had to be an exit hidden somewhere. I just didn't know where. Okay, I got it. So you don't remember your name, age, or birthday, right? How about your address or telephone number? If not those, then how about your family, your friends, or anything? All the dots. So you really can't remember? It was just like you said. I didn't have any memories of anything. A sense of something not being right gnawed at my mind. No, it was something closer to it. A sense of loss. I felt that I had lost the bulk of my existence. Like someone had stolen me away, and the me who was left was just an empty shell. The me that was there, who knew? Who knew if it was even the real me? The instant that thought went through my mind, I was frozen by an icy wave of unease. Scared, isolated, lonely. You. I grabbed firmly onto Yu's hand. Her warm palm. That warmth was the only thing saving me. It's alright now. What are you, a baby? Stop with that sad face. She shot me a smile as she squeezed my hand back. I don't think amnesia is all that uncommon. Amnesia? You don't have any memory, so that's memory loss or amnesia, right? Of course it is. I wonder what caused it. The air pressure change, or maybe you hit your head somewhere. Or maybe some severe mental shock. Like maybe you're riding a crazy ride and you panicked or something? All the dots. But don't worry. It's probably just temporary. It'll come back. You think so? For sure. Of course, if you were in a major accident and had severe trauma to the brain, that would be a whole different thing. But that doesn't seem to be the case. You put your hand on my hair and gave me a smile so bright I almost needed sunglasses. That smile flooded into my heart, wiping away the remains of the unease that was swirling there. So, do you want to get going? I could sing a lullaby and take you in, but... Aww, that's adorable. Unfortunately, we don't have time to relax. You understand, right? I nodded and got up off the bed. You started walking for the door. My eyes stopped on the bluish ribbon on Yu's back. The ribbon seemed to have taken on water and glittered brightly, almost like the wings of a newborn fairy. Oh, what's that bang? Oh, she's trying to open stuff. It's so good, it doesn't seem to open. You said that after trying to move the door with her weight several times. Those were the emergency stairs. Or more accurately, it was the passage on the way here. The emergency stairs were wound in a spiral around a flat pipe. If we followed those stairs, they would take us to the floating island, well, at least in theory. But then, right in front of us, stood a thick steel wall. 
The wall had a small watertight door and if we couldn't squeeze through that, then we couldn't make a way any higher. Well, this isn't the floating island yet, is it? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Not even. I mean, we haven't even eat. We haven't even hit Erster Borden, so we could still got a long way to go. Erster Borden, was that the first basement floor? You nodded. What does that mean in terms of depth? How deep is it? Well, let's see. Zurisak is 54 meters deep, so... Around 30 meters, give or take, I guess. We've only climbed around 4 or 5 meters on these stairs. 30 meters deep. 30 meters sounded so close. But... But in any event, the door didn't open up, then that was it. Hey, I wonder why it won't open. Who knows? Maybe there's a secret spell or something? Spell? You mean like open sesame? Well, that kind of spell? There you go, taking me seriously. Well, what then? You really want to know? Well, yeah. Maybe you better not ask. Huh? So, what are you gonna do? Do you want to hear it or not? Which is it? Uh, we are definitely... Definitely going to ask. I want to know. Okay, okay I'll tell you. All the dots. You, you just were talking about how the water tight doors started closing all of a sudden, right? Well, yeah. Well, that means that these doors closed automatically. Closed automatically? Let me detect the flooding and automatically shut the doors in the areas that were in danger. Uh, what's Lemmy? Well, that's what, that's what we call the main computer that supervises and manages all the electronic systems in the Mew. Hmm. So what? So what? Here, I'll show you. Clang, clang. You knocked on the steel door with her lightly closed fist. This was probably closed by Lemmy as well. I see. So in other words, the other side of this door is flooded with water. Probably. She had been right. It really wasn't something I wanted to hear. If the doors were suddenly locked, all we had to do was find a way to open it and we could climb up to freedom. But if the other side was full of seawater, well then... Thinking beyond that was no fun. So, what do we do now? I guess we should check out the other emergency stairs. That's all we can do, right? You said that with a sigh and started heading down the stairs. After that... We tried two emergency sets of stairs in the area and both were a waste of effort. They were shut off by thick partitions making it impossible to climb up to Zwittersack. According to you, there were in total of 12 emergency staircases in the Mew. Three of those were closed off so that left nine. You and I walked around emergency corridors searching for those nine. But we met with a dead end. And a dead end. And it didn't. The watertight doors were completely shut and there was no way we were getting them open manually. We gave up and headed out into the normal corridors to see if we could work our way around using them. And still, we met with the dead end. And a dead end. And yet another dead end. Inside this sprawling Lemieux complex was a web of several dozen corridors. We investigated each, only finding closed doors everywhere. It seemed hopeless. Both the normal corridors and the emergency corridors were sealed. All of them were blocked off. The only thing left for us to try was... It looks like the only thing left is to go down a floor. 
With the elevators out of action, the emergency stairs were our only choice. Thankfully, one third of the remaining three stairways was still operating, which meant that even if there was no going up, we could still go down. You and I wound around and around the spiral stairwell until we reached Dritter's dock, three floors underwater. Water. I muttered that without thinking when we reached the floor. As far as I could see, the floor was a sheet of water that had flooded in. It was about up to my ankles. There is water flooding in from somewhere else. No, I don't think so. The water's not moving, is it? When she mentioned it, I realized that there wasn't even a ripple on the water's surface. There was no evidence that the water level was increasing. I looked around to be sure, but there weren't any signs that the water was leaking from anywhere. Well then, what is this? This must be from the water that washed us away earlier. I figured the seawater that pulled on Switcher Sock flowed down here. Maybe via the emergency stairs or event, I don't know, but somewhere it flowed down here. Hey, you remember that saying? About how water flows downhill? We entered the room from a door along the corridor. The room's massive ancient remains were steeped into water, making it seem like just making it seem just like the seafloor had risen up. As you and I looked around and all over the wide room, our legs splashed water all over. Our drenched clothes were drying, so we didn't really feel the cold. The water on the floor was not as cold as I'd expected. But walking in water with shoes was, well, unpleasant. Finally, when we turned into a corridor, we heard an unexpected sound. Hey, did you hear something just now? It sounded like someone banging. We stopped and listened. Is it Morse code? No, it's just a bang, 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 bang. That's not Morse code. Somebody was hitting something. Something nearby. There are other people here. Other people that were left behind? Well, maybe that bang, bang is a code. Because it's, uh, what, short or long sounds? I don't know Morse code, so I can't... I can't tell. We ran at full speed in the direction of the sound. Hey, somebody! Oh, that's Coco, isn't it? Yeah, my bad. Ah, uh, somebody! Is there anyone there? Anyone? Two female voices were coming from inside the elevator. You and I looked at each other and nodded. Hold on just a little longer. Oh, so one's Sagumi and one is Coco. We're going to open the door for you. Who is that? Who is that? That's not Sugumi. Sarah Soju? Alright, oh good. I have no idea who that is. Who is that? Because that's not Coco, and that's definitely not Sugumi. I was worried that no one would come. The voice from inside sounded well. It did sound weak or injured. Hang on, how are we going to open this? You place both of your hands on the door and push left and right. You can do it, you. Oh, why do we keep running into palms like this? Uh, want it open? If you are paying attention, then you'd be able to tell. You give it a try. I switched place with you and reached out to try to open the door. Um, it didn't budge. Come on, put some power into it. I tried to put my fingers in the crack in the floor, but my fingernails just barely squeezed in and nothing happened. Ow! Blood started oozing from the nail on my index finger, but it was a digit next to it that caught my eye. The thumb on my left hand. Hey, I noticed a distinct mark on it. On the meaty part of that thumb was a deep scar about a centimeter long. I wondered if I had had it for long. 
The mouth of the cup was swollen and milky white colored. Are you alright? Her question brought me back to reality. Oh, you're bleeding. Let me see. You grab my left hand. I suddenly belt my thumb under it, hiding the scar. For some reason, I didn't want her to see it. You took an adhesive bandage from her pocket and put it on the bloody finger. I swear, you need so much looking after. Well, thanks? My fingers smelled faintly sweet. Uh, the door still won't open. But it seems like there's someone that needs even more looking after than you do. What, uh, what should we do? Oh, that's right! You muttered. She searched around in a pocket for something. And she took out a... She is so cute. <laughs> Drumroll, please! A marker! It was just a felt tip pen. How is that going to help us? See this? You take it like this, then do this. Around and around and around. What's she doing? Casting a spell? As she said that, she screwed the cap end into the space between the doors. A gap appeared. See? Wow, that is ingenious. You? Good job. I jabbed my finger into the gap and started forcing the door open. The box inside, the part where people ride, was stuck right before arriving at Dritterstock. Above the door, jutting out some 50 centimeters or so, was the lower bit of the elevator box. It was at a height where I reached my hand out completely, it would just reach. If we could get the box open, then it seemed possible to pull the people trapped inside over to our side. Show the ride! Use one sentence, said it all. As she implied, I stood in front of her and spread my legs, bracing myself. Hey, why do I have to lift you up? Huh? I meant the opposite way around. In this type of situation, it's the stronger person that's on the bottom, right? Well, aren't you much older than me? I mean, we're assuming kid is what, ninth grade? She's probably 12? Well, a ninth grader can be pretty tall, but kid doesn't seem to be pretty tall. He seems to be a lot shorter. He seems to be almost, uh, Coco's height. I went around behind you, wordlessly squatting down. You was wearing a skirt, after all. One reason I tried to be on top was I thought it would save her the embarrassment. <laughs> and as I was thinking that, you straddled my head with her legs. I put both my hands on my knees, supporting myself, and stood up all at once. Her soft thighs dug on my head. Keep your head forward, kid. That's all. Keep your head forward. She was pressed against the back of my neck. I was kind of nice. Wait, hold on. We're almost there. Please help. You took the marker and started pying it between the doors again. She stuck her finger in the gap. And then she opened the door with a flourish. Yes, I love with a flourish. Reminds me of the Quest for Glory games when you sign your name into the adventure corresponding books. You always sign it with a flourish. Jeez. Wow. Who the heck is this? That's... That's not you. I'm sorry, that's not Coco. That's Sarah. The girl that we don't know anything about, but... For some reason, we never saw. But here she is. So what is she doing here? Why is she with Coco? Who the heck is this girl? I have so many questions. Unfortunately, this is gonna have to wait till next time, my friends. I'm really sorry about that. Really, 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 really sorry. Uh, but I, I have a whole lot going on uh, today and yesterday. Although I do get a vacation coming up. So hopefully I'll have time to, you know, vegetate a little more, you know, in the near future. Uh, but yeah, I had to take yesterday off just because my brain felt like it was about to explode or something. And there's days when you just need a break. 
So, I love you all so very much. Thank you for everything. I really do appreciate you guys so deeply from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next time, when we find out hopefully who this kid is, Sarah, who the heck is she? Answers will hopefully be coming. Although knowing this game, probably not. In our blind let's play, ever 17 for the PC. Until then, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you would like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more. Also, please do not forget, you matter. You are brilliant and you are loved. And you should always remember to be true to yourself. Don't let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly feathered flightless bird. Till next time.